All right, everybody. So this is my second video on this um, short series on what to look for when you're screening for a company. So now I'm talking about PE ratios. So I wanted to show you a few different examples. So we're back on macro trends. Now, when we're going to um, PE ratios, we're going to click on this price ratio, and then we're going to click on PE ratio. Now I'm going to remind you, PE ratio is the stock price divided by the earnings per share. And if you watch my first video, you'll kind of un understand what earnings per share is and how you calculate it. So this is actually a ratio of a ratio. You actually need um, another ratio to calculate this ratio. So I'm going to show you why you need to be a little bit careful with PE ratio sometimes. So um, I know you guys all know Moderna. So I looked up Moderna right here. It's called mRNA is the ticker. And let's take a look at their earnings um, per share and their PE ratio. So we have their trailing 12 months uh, earnings per share, which if you recall is um, four quarters, four of the most recent quarters of earnings per share added together. So here we have something stupid. You know, we have like 34.03 earnings per share. Now, what is the um, PE ratio? Well, the PE ratio is the stock price. And this was the stock price on the 13th. So um, that just happened, that was this Friday. So this is the stock price on the 13th. And this is the PE ratio, 4.03. Now that seems really, really low. I know a lot of people will um, buy stocks in the 15 to 20 PE ratio or you know 10 to 20, depending on uh, their growth rate. So if we're looking at Moderna, this looks surprisingly cheap and you know you may be misled. Now here's where you want to look at the earnings per share history. Look, before that, they were going negative, 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 negative. All of a sudden, we go positive. And you know, this probably has a lot to do with the vaccine. So now, you might have people starting to think, okay, how sustainable is this? Or how long is this uh, contract that they have with the government? So I don't follow up too much with Moderna, but seeing that the PE is this low, I would assume that this isn't sustainable and investors are um, pricing that in. And that's why Moderna um, PE ratio is so low because investors are pricing in that this isn't sustainable. So this is why you want to look at earnings per share history. What happens once this stream of revenue goes away? So now uh, the other day, somebody in the Discord was uh, talking about Heinz and how they wanted to buy Heinz. So when we're looking at Heinz, it's uh, under craft, so it's KHC. Let's take a look at their um, PE ratio. So their PE ratio at this point in time in 2020 was 113. Think about what this company does. Do you want to pay a 113 multiple for this? Probably not. And we go back in time, we look at the PE history. And you know what? There was periods of time where it was over 20. There's also periods of time where it was under 10. So now we have 113. I mean, to me, this is hype. Think about what happened in 2020. We had the uh, pandemic. So a company like Heinz will probably do really well during the pandemic because they're basically selling um, shelf-stable foods. So we're looking at Heinz, and here in 2020, I mean, this is, this is just ridiculous, 113 PE. And um, when we're looking at the earnings per share, it was only like 29. So yeah, pretty ridiculous. People are just paying 113 times uh, earnings per share for uh, the stock. Now, uh, we're finally going to uh, more reasonable levels, but this is still pretty unreasonable. Do you want to pay a 44.74 PE ratio for a company of this nature? Now, what affects uh, PE ratio? Well, obviously, the price and the earnings per share. 
Now, what affects a stock price? A lot of things can affect the stock price. You know, it could be hype. It could be revenue growth. It could be um, just prospects of uh, growing future uh, cash flows. So we want to look at things like uh, revenue. So we could go look at revenue. And um, what have they done in revenue? Well, if we go back in time, and we have the dates down here, as you can see, I mean, their revenue has been pretty flat. It's just been pretty flat, 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 flat. I'm not seeing too much growth here. So does it doesn't make sense to pay 40 PE multiples? No. Let's look at their um, profits. Let's look at their bottom line. Uh, yeah, not too good either. I mean, I'm not seeing anything crazy here. So in my opinion, this is just hype that is coming down. So there's a lot of hype in 2020 and now it's coming down. Now we could do one more thing. We could uh, compare KHC with other stocks. Now, um, what is a competitor for Kraft Heinz? Well, I would say Mondelez, MDLZ. So now we could uh, compare two companies off different metrics. So to me, it doesn't really make sense to just compare one metric to another. You want to look at ratios because ratios will um, give you a better idea. So we could look at, let's see, let's look at PE ratios. All right, so blue is Heinz. The orange dotted line is Mondelez. So as you can see, Mondelez trades about, uh, let's see, I'd say like, 18 to 20, maybe like 16 to 20. Now, what is Kraft trading at? Way above that. So is Kraft probably going to fall to like 20 PE? I think so. So what does 20 PE for Kraft mean? Well, it basically means that their price right now is going to get slashed. So does this mean go out to the stock market right now and start shorting Heinz? Maybe, I don't know. But you know, maybe that's risky. Maybe you shouldn't do that. I don't know. I can't really advise you to do that. But I'm just telling you right now, what I can tell you is that Heinz is a little bit um, expensive right now. It's trading at 40 PEs. I mean, competitor like Mondelez is trading at 21 PE. And then we can look at things like um, revenue for these individual companies. So we don't really want to compare the revenue because these are two different companies. Keep in mind, these are two totally different companies that are different sizes that so we don't really want to compare revenue to revenue. We just want to look at the individual revenue. So if we're looking at Mondelez, we see that revenue is pretty flat. I mean, it just started to creep up just a little bit. We look at Heinz, revenue is pretty flat. Now it's just starting to fall a little bit. So, I mean, in my opinion, Mondelez is better. Let's look at uh, net profits. If I could find it, that is. Let me just see. Net profits. Yeah, I must have skipped it. Net profit margins. All right, so Mondelez and Kraft. So yeah, as you can see, Kraft it's losing money over here. They just started gaining a little bit of money. Obviously not sustainable, as you can see here. And yeah, a lot of fluctuations. Mondelez is a little bit more steady. So yeah, now you can see these uh, types of trends. Now, um, now I wanna focus on Netflix. So we're going to look at Netflix. Now, a lot of people will overpay for growth. And um, I will show you why this can be a little bit risky. So we're going to look at PE ratios on Netflix. Now, take a look here. We have some pretty, pretty crazy PE ratios. I mean, we're seeing people paying like 300, 400 times PE, 
or 400 times um, price to earnings for this company. And look at where it is now. I mean, now it's at 17 PE. So um, these multiples are going to change depending on investors, um, just kind of what investors think about the future for this company. So if this company is going to continue to grow at ridiculous rates, investors are going to get a little bit euphoric and they're going to start overpaying because they think that this company is going to grow into their earnings. So um, we're looking at earnings per share here and there's a steady growth. So earnings per share constantly growing. But notice in these last few quarters, it's really started to uh, just kind of flatten out a little bit. So now investors are a little bit worried and we could go look at their revenue. So if we're looking at revenue, growing, 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 all of a sudden, if I were to draw a line here, this kind of looks like it's uh, rounding out. So as you can see, it looks like it's going to round out a little bit here. Maybe it's going to go flat. Who knows? But um, keep in mind that companies like Netflix, uh, they're also, investors also pay attention to something like uh, monthly active users or daily active users. You know, these are also metrics for uh, future growth of the company. And if you see these numbers decline, then investors are going to start paying lower multiples, you know? So Netflix could have been like 100 PE, uh, and then now investors say, well, now it's worth only 15. Now it's worth only 10. You know, they'll say, well, I think Netflix is worth 15 PE now that um, the growth aspect is kind of deflating out of it. So this is why you have to be really careful when a company's trading above 20 PE or something. I mean, even amazing companies like Apple aren't trading over 40 or over 50 PE. I mean, they were at one point, but um, now they're really not. And we could look at Apple. So if you pay attention to CNBC, there's a lot of people on CNBC who say, well, I think Apple, the bottom for Apple is 125. Now, you might think, well, where did they get 125 from? Did they just uh, pull it out of their ass or what? And I'm going to show you why they're saying Apple is worth 125. So we're going to go to price ratios, PE ratio. We're looking at the trailing 12 months. That's 6.15. So essentially what these guys are doing is they're assigning a 20 PE to Apple. So if we take 6.15 times that by 20, you know, it's around 123, 125. So um, yeah, they're basically saying, well, we think Apple is worth 20 PE ratio. And if we go back in time right now, it's a little bit expensive. It was a little bit expensive right here too. And we go back in time and well, Apple has been trading around, say like, uh, 15 to 20 maybe. So yeah, I mean, right now it could be a little bit expensive, but that's because we saw a lot of growth in the last few years. And um, the question is, is that sustainable? So if it's sustainable, then yeah, PE ratios are gonna stay over 20. If it's not sustainable, then PE ratios are probably gonna fall under 20 and people are gonna start valuing it around 15 to 20 PE again. So um, we also wanna look at the earnings per share history. As you can see, earnings per share has constantly grown. Constantly grown. Now there's a reason for this. And I'm going to show you. So we're going to go on to the revenue and profits tab. We're going to look at shares outstanding. Now remember that earnings per share, the denominator is shares outstanding. So what happens when a company is buying back its shares? Well, yeah, I'll show you. So a company like Apple is constantly buying back their shares. This is what you want to see in a company. You're going to want to see this. So as you can see, they're buying back their shares. And uh, we could do something cool. We can actually calculate 
how much of their shares they bought back. So we could find a base year. So let's say our base year is going to be 2013. And we're looking at 26.489 billion shares. So let's just type that in, 26.489. Now let's look at right now. Right now we're at 16.403. So we're gonna subtract that by minus 16.403. Now we're gonna divide that by our base year, which was, uh, gosh, I think it was this one. Yeah, 26.489. Okay, so from this point here in 2013, all the way to where we are now in 2022, Apple bought back 38% of their shares. That's crazy, 38%. So Apple is basically the king of uh, share buybacks. Cause yeah, they literally bought back over a third of their shares. So let's just say that they continue to buy back shares. Well then, yeah, this number is gonna go up if we're comparing it to this base year of uh, 2013. So that's a good sign. If a company like Apple is starting to weaken in revenue growth, they can at least uh, consistently increase their earnings per share by just buying back shares because they have a pretty, pretty healthy cash position. So now we can look at things like revenue. So why did Apple start going to um, these crazy PE ratios above what it used to be? I mean, it used to trade around like 10 to 20. Now it's trading over 20. Well, let's just look at what happened. This is uh, 2020 right here. So right around 2020, we're flat. All of a sudden we had this huge boom. Look at where we were, like 2.74 billion, 274 billion, 386.